Hey, this is Rob Swanson with The Real Estate Mogul Show. Let's get into it. What's up, everybody? Hey, happy 4th of July. It's Rob Swanson here back with another episode of The Real Estate Mogul Show. And we are happy to be here. I got to tell you, uh, number one, if you are uh, a veteran, uh, part of the military, uh, or just a citizen of the United States, and you are celebrating this great country, that is an awesome thing to do. And I'm going to be honest with you. I have gone through the ups and downs through the years and asked myself, should I just go get a second citizenship and get the heck out of here? And the answer to that is no. This is the greatest country in the world. That is why so many people want to come here. But it does take us and people like you to step up and keep this country great. So with that, welcome to the show today. I've got the uh, crew in the studio once again. And uh, why don't you guys say hello and what's going on in your world? Hey, hey. I always let what's you up? Start. Oh, man. So you're going to start in the middle of the, of the clock round robin today. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to go clockwise and just make this like clear for no. people. You're going to jump in and say, hey, I'm going first today. This is my shot. My well, time to shine, Henry baby. Henry talking, so I had to save the, <laughs> save the, the, uh, the silence. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. What's happening, Mike? Um, Who here, are you? Why are you here? Here's what's happening. We have no uh, idea. I'm still trying to find myself, and I was holding up a sign on the corner, and uh, Rob drove by and said, hey, you want to come do a podcast? And I was like, yeah, fire <laughs> it up. Let's go. That's right. So that's how I got here. But uh, checking in. So here's my check-in. Um, I've been learning guitar for a couple years now, and then about a year, uh, no, about a year ago, I met the, the guy that um, worship leader at our church. And I was sort of joking, but sort of not. And I was like, hey, man, I'm on the 12-month plan. And then I want to play guitar on the worship team at church. And uh, so I don't know if I'm ready yet, but I've been working on it. And so Kyle and I are going to get together here in the next couple of weeks and uh, jam. So I'm excitedly nervous. But Are you about to get mostly, thrown into the fire one, one, one Sunday morning? Mostly excited about it. Nice. Yeah, so I've been you know tinkering for... A while, but I play most days. Yeah, for at least a little bit. So yeah, I'm excited about that. We'll see where it goes. What nice. What are you gonna say when the year comes around and he comes up to you and says, "Hey, well, you're you're on this no, morning." Yeah, no, it's been a. I might have told him I was on the two year plan, and it's been about a year. <laughs> I, I told him uh, last year Fourth of July. Nice. Go. So nice. Anyway. So does that does that mean you're gonna ultimately play in front of a trickle of people, well, dozens of people? Yeah, that's hundreds the thing. of people, thousands of people. Yeah, hundreds to uh, quite a few. So it's a good sized church. Yeah, multiple so campuses. The nerves. So we're at a, we're at a smaller campus than the other one, but yeah. And I've um, you know, it this is a new endeavor for me. So to think about and part of why I'm getting together with him and he knows this is, where am I at? What do we need to do? And here's the thing about guitar. This is not lead guitar. This is very much rhythm to get started uh, a lot of songs that i've learned in my journey so far use a handful of chords this is not complicated guitar yet i want to get to complicated guitar but this would be step one nice i like it so anyway i like it henry what's going on all right my turn uh month of june was pretty big for me personally on the wholesaling side of things uh did four deals Nice. In the l latter half of the month, I really wasn't uh, doing much in the beginning of the month. We had a lot going on. In the latter latter half of the month, um, did four deals. Nice. Uh, three of which were owned by the same person, owned by the same owner of the house that we've been talking about in past podcasts that I personally bought from, um, was actually not in the market at the time to buy his other three. So ended up still helping him out. He was still looking to offload a lot of his property. So we, uh, we did three of his and then one other one, um, in Love the it. month of June. So, which I, I want to, because if I don't point it out, people are going to miss what you just said. And what you just said was one seller who you had helped out previously and made money on came back to you with three more deals. Yep. So you had a four deal month. Three of those deals came from one seller who 
knew you, liked you, trusted you, and you had gotten across the finish line before. And I don't know that we've talked about this in other shows, but I want to, I know we've talked about it offline. This, this seller came from the tired landlord list in Freedom Soft, mm -hmm. if I'm correct. Is that? Yeah, yeah, totally correct. And we're, to continue on that, we're actually on number five now of him. So this is fifth and final one yeah. of this uh, theme of being a tired landlord. This is the situation yeah. that he was in. So yeah, yeah. it's exactly what we talked about in two podcasts ago. But uh, yeah, he's on his fifth and final one, and um, he's got a pretty hefty uh, retirement bank account right now. Yeah. Uh, after taxes, I guess. But um, yeah, he, he he was getting out of the game, um, yeah. and this is his fifth and final one, and there's an offer in on that one already. So I want well. I want to circle back to that, uh, but I want to keep the uh, welcomes and intros going. But we are going to circle back to that yeah. because. It's a lesson that I don't want people to miss. If they hear this, this is this is like an epiphany aha mm -hmm. moment for somebody if they grasp what we just talked about. So we're going to circle back in a moment. In fact, I'm going to lean over here, grab a pen, and make a note on my uh, episode docket to not forget to circle back. You know how I'm going to do that? I'm going to draw a big <laughs> circle with an arrow. And that means circle back. And I'm going to put an H in the middle to Henry. Yeah. Well, yeah, but all, all in all, month of June was was pretty cool on the wholesaling side. On the Freedom Soft side, uh, we wrapped up the challenge, uh, which was a, an awesome, awesome experience. Uh, had a lot of feedback from a lot of users that are seeing results already and just uh, giving us feedback as well about um, how life-changing it was for them to get out of that mindset. So Love it. Uh, really good feedback. So, yeah. Love it. Awesome. Beautiful. Joe pushing the buttons over here, keeping us all in line, making this show come to life. What's happening in your world? Uh, in my world, um, just having fun, scaling some content, doing some testing with it. Um, you know, we kicked off that training, did some training uh, today. This is a, you know, when people are hearing this, it's a week later. Um, so we're just dialing in the, you know, the way that we can reach out to people and, and keep people in proximity to the things that, that you're teaching and these guys are supporting them with. And so um, it's, it's just exciting to see. And, um, you know, it's fun, fun to be around it. Yeah. And, you know, Henry and I, he just hit me up. Talk about a guy who's got like who's the epitome of this type of story. He just told me, hey, man, I got eight deals coming from this one guy in the pipeline here. I'm going to need some help. And so we're going to, you know, work together on them. Um, and this is a guy that has not talk about follow up. This will be a great thing to circle back on. This is a guy that has what, Henry, 30 properties that he's getting rid of. And yeah. So same. We'll, we'll talk about this, but a very similar type of landlord, but on a like an, a big time in real estate investor scale like this other guy, you know, local grew up in the city, you know, owned a couple houses here and there, and now he's getting out of the game. Then you got investor number two, who, like, this is his profession, his job. Mm -hmm. Like, um, this is someone, like, I'm talking to someone like you on the other end of the phone, the way that I see it. Yep. And he's 30 plus getting out of the game. Hmm. And direct mail hit him at the right time about being a tired landlord. And yep. so we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we will, because the... To, to drop the seed of opportunity into someone's mind, if if you can make that connection with that guy or gal who's in the world of real estate investing and they've been there for a while and they're and they're ready to move on, they're ready to cash out, they're ready to make it relatively simple, uh, and and you can build that connection and that relationship and be their exit, be the buyer, you've got yourself a year to two years of deal flow baked in on, in one lead. And people miss that opportunity. They're always looking for, you know, one, one piece of marketing, one lead, one piece of marketing, one lead. And what they should understand is one piece of marketing can create months or years worth of leads if you treat that right. It's a, it's a pretty cool thing. So, so Rob, um, real quick, not only that, but... Just like people who play golf know other people that play golf, people that own real estate know other people that own real estate. Yeah, that's right. So tapping into that one sometimes can be the in into a massive network of property owners. That's, that's right, because that's the other piece, right? A lot of times people forget to ask. Once you, get, once you get a deal across the finish line with a seller, they forget to ask, 
hey, do you know anybody else that's looking to sell their house? Because I'm interested in buying some more, you know, in the area and, and around town. And you'd be surprised at how many times if you just make that par- a, a part of your sort of post-close checklist. follow-up checklist, yeah. it's, it's a, a big deal. And you'd be surprised at how many times that turns into another payday. Um, so, yeah, uh, from, from my perspective, um, as we're recording this, it was just yesterday. I was up in uh, the Tetons. I was up in Jackson Hole. I guess it's Jackson, Wyoming, but everybody calls it Jackson Hole, Wyoming. So Jackson Hole uh, for the last couple of days doing a little mastermind with some guys, a lot of guys that people listening to this would probably know. Um, and we had a good time. Yesterday morning I got up and I got to fly fish the, the Snake River. And uh, that was pretty cool. I did not get skunked by the snake. I pulled some fish out of there. Uh, it flows were pretty high. It Henry's was, jealous. Uh, Just, hey, it was fun. You're, you're, I, feel, I feel good for you. Your October is coming. Yeah, it's, September, October, <laughs> September, September, September. Your September is coming. <laughs> uh, flows were pretty high. It was pretty. It was pretty kind of muddy. Uh, been a lot of rain, um, and so for those fishermen listening, um, caught most of what I caught yesterday on streamers. I had to get that action going. And the morning, it was kind of overcast. The afternoon got a little bit more sunny, so I had to switch up the flies. And But it was fun. It was cool. Uh, let's see. We could do a whole podcast sometime on just fishing. <laughs> yeah, you better bring this back or else we'll get on them. Yeah, we got, we got to go down the – we got we to gotta stay on the real estate conversation because that's why people are here. Um, I'm, I'm pretty excited. We are getting closer to – starting the virtual market challenge, which is a big deal. Some people say to themselves, I've got to do this locally. I've got to figure out how to make money in my local market before I could ever go virtual. Um, I'm going to tell you the quick story about a guy that I coached a number of years ago, Chad. He had that mindset and he was like, he was a local guy, Denver guy. I've got to make money in Denver before I go virtual into something else. And the, the reality is, I kept telling him, the reason you're struggling is because the strategies I'm teaching you and you're trying to apply work, but they work in certain markets at certain phases of the cycle better than others. And so it's going to work, but the amount of time it's going to take you to get there and the amount of money you're going to spend to get there is greater with certain strategies in certain markets. Now, you may make a bigger payday once it finally does hit, but you've got to continue to be willing to put the chips in and make the investments of time and marketing spend to get there. And so after nine months of this conversation and repeatedly saying, telling him what to do and him saying, yeah, but in my heart, I feel like I got to do it in my backyard before I can do it somewhere else or I haven't proved myself worthy. He finally had had enough. I'm not making any money. So I'm going to listen to what you told me to do nine months ago, and I'm going to finally do it. Within a couple weeks, he put $5,000 check in his pocket because he moved into an easy profit city. And so one of the things I'll tell you, and I think uh, I think I saw Tom Kroll probably posted this online, um, and I, so I'm going to steal it and borrow it, but I'm going to give him credit because I just did. And I think he said, if you're struggling to achieve the results you desire, do what your coach told you to do the first time. Nice. <laughs> Isn't that great? That I thought it was good. great. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's what happened with Chad. And so I'm getting excited about launching and releasing our virtual market challenge where we get to show people the process of kind of number one, understanding why would I invest in a market outside of my own backyard? Number two, how do I even approach that subject or that topic? And then number three, kind of the steps to execute on it and the, the whole goal at the end of the challenge is to launch into a virtual market and build your business. Mike, you, you've been around uh, here for a long time, and we used yep. to do these events uh, called the Build Your Business event. And the yep. promise of the event, and I'll, I'll, let, I'll stop talking here in a moment so you guys can get a word in edgewise. But the promise of the event was you could 
come in. We did them Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And that's because we wanted two business days plus a, a weekend day to sort of wrap things up. Yep. And the promise of the event is you could walk in with no business. And on Saturday afternoon when you walked out, you would have a living, breathing, heart-pumping, live business that you were going home to. And we did those events live in our office for nine years and we stopped doing them a few years back, uh, but I always remember how much fun that was and the the panic that would set in to people when they would fly home and leave because they were showing back up on Monday morning to opportunity. And now you got to turn that opportunity into something. Right. The advantage of that live event was it forced people to do uncomfortable things. To expand, you know, we were talking about this with the hundred offer challenge, the massive, and I've talked to multiple people now, even a couple weeks after it took place, but the mindset shift between I've never made an offer or I've only made a handful of offers to, holy cow, I just made a hundred. And then a lot of students that I've talked to have followed up with it with a hundred more the next week. It shatters a barrier. Um, the, the build your business event did the same thing. People had heard that they should talk to sellers, make offers, send out marketing. They come live to the event and the marketing's out the door. Yep. Right. And, um, so it, it really forced them to get outside their comfort zone, which is where everything all of us want is or, or currently lies. Right. And, uh, so I really saw it's, um, the how to really matters, but it's the same thing we were talking about a few weeks ago, the bigger problem, the bigger hurdles between your two ears. Yep. And so ahead of the virtual market challenge, I'm really excited about this one too, because just like Chad, I think most people feel like, hey, I want to get involved in real estate, but in order to buy and sell real estate, you have to see it, smell it, look at it, inspect it, experience it, walk around. Because again, they're filtering the uh, what we do as investors through how they would perceive or picture themselves buying a house or if they have bought a home they assume yep. it's the exact same way yep and so this is going to just like the hundred offer challenge is tearing down barriers for people that's what this virtual market challenge is going to do that's right yeah and it, it, i i like how we're stacking on these offers so it, if there's a third one coming then it could it could only just increase it even more but you know if a user or a, a someone's went through the, the hundred offer challenge and now they may have questions about, okay, I did it in this market, but what about another market? Well, then they can go through the virtual market challenge. And then at the end of that challenge, you're only going to be able to just rely back on what you learned on the 100 offer challenge. Because mm -hmm. pick your market. Now what? Well, yep. go make offers in that market. So they're going to stack on top of each other totally. really, really nicely. And I'm excited about that. Yeah, 100%. And um, it, so... I'm going to I'm going to say two things back to the point that Mike was making, right? The the biggest challenge that people have is the 6 inches of gray matter between their ears, and that is because in Freedom Soft, we have made it so easy to build a list. We have made it so easy to do marketing. We've made it so easy to analyze a deal. We've made it so easy to make offers. We've made it so easy to capture inbound replies to the marketing and to the offers. We've made it so easy to automate the follow-up. We've made it so easy to process deal flow. And we've made it so easy up to the point where people s typically shoot themselves in the foot. And they shoot themselves in the foot once they've done all of that stuff that we've made easy. And then the first time the human element has to get interjected into it, they've got to pick up the phone and they've got to talk to somebody and they've got to negotiate a deal. And they're like, I don't know what to say. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to take this conversation in order to solve the seller's problem. And so what people do is they, they screw it up right at that point. And I'm pointing this out because that's the whole premise and the purpose behind the technology we're building into FreedomSoft right now, which is the offer negotiator and or the deal negotiator. And the whole point is 
we we can see the data and we can see where where people win and we can see the roadblocks in the data because we run a, a, a large CRM full of a lot of real estate investors doing a lot of work and we see this big cliff at the point where the lead is generated and it would require somebody to pick up the phone and make that make that call that's the cliff like that's where the the funnel that leads to a closing drops and so what what we've done is we've taken our one call close script which is the script that I've taught my team for years to get on the phone and follow We've turned that into an online interactive process that a seller can negotiate a deal almost with themselves. And the interesting thing about this is all we did, and I call it the loops and leads model, right? So uh, a, a seller conversation, an acquisition conversation has a straight line where you're trying to take them, right? So you start at the very beginning of the conversation and if the conversation flowed perfectly forward to exactly where you want it to be, where you're able to help that seller put a property under contract, they accept your offer, there's a straight line that's perfect to get there. The problem is, you know what that script is, but the seller doesn't. So when you say something and the seller responds in a different way, they loop you or they d direct you back or off track, off of that straight line. They direct you somewhere else. And this is usually some type of an objection or some type of an interjection that a seller brings up or says, and it forces you to go a different direction. And where people screw it up is, number one, they don't know where to take the script, but number two, they don't know how to loop that seller back to the straight line and keep it moving forward. And so what I call it is the loops and leads. And so you're, you're, you're leading with where you want to go, and then the seller interjects. You have to loop it back around, and then you have to lead it back down that straight line. And so what we did is we took our one call close script and the loops and leads approach, and we created all of the objection handling and the negotiation and the conversation into an online interactive deal negotiator. And so now what people get to do is they get to not screw it up because their humanness got in the way. They get to actually go to bed, wake up the next morning with sellers that have interacted with this online deal negotiator to predetermine, pre-negotiated cash or terms deals. Now you get to look into your CRM and say, oh, Johnny is willing to sell me this house at, you know, $132,000. Um, I, I was willing to pay $146,000. That's a good deal. There's margin there. So instead of you screwing the conversation up, we've taken the human element out of it and we've put technology in place that delivers the script perfectly every time. And that's the beautiful part about it. Now, I mean, I, I don't know if people are like, this is like mind blowing for, if people are really thinking about this and thinking through it. Um, I mean, what did we spend on a VA? 1200 bucks a month for um, them to filter through these, what is it, 3000 or however many leads, let's say you're putting out there and you are filtering those down to those green light, you know, possibly, you know, motivated yellow light sellers that now this thing is going to automatically take all of that uh, time, effort, yep. uh, execution of script and get you to that place where you are talking to those motivated sellers right off. And well, and it streamlines it like crazy. Streams not, uh, streamlines it like crazy, but, if, uh, but think about it. Because at the end of the day, one VA for a, for a month at say twelve hundred bucks a month, um, you know twelve twelve dollars an hour times forty hours a week if they're full time, is whatever that is uh, five hundred bucks a week times four weeks. That's two thousand dollars a month. Plus you got to train and, them. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It doesn't doesn't even take into account the time that you had to spend, Joe, on yeah. making sure that they were. Um, you know, familiar with the script enough to where you felt confident that they could get a red light to a green to a yellow light, a yellow light to a green light, right. and then you know all the possibilities of that falling through the cracks because you know you probably had a better 
uh, success rate if you would have just done it, but you didn't have time to do that. So right. I think this is where the deal negotiator really just slots in just perfectly. Yeah, because at the end of the day, the the twelve hundred dollar VA working part time still was just setting you up with the next conversation, and then you had to go through the whole thing. Right. And so to to get to a full time, full coverage team of VAs, you've got you're going to cover at least five VAs that are highly trained. Let's say you can get a highly trained team that can do that closing call, the one called close script, not just a setter call, but a closer call and actually convert deals on the back end. You've got a you got a team of five people working full time on different shifts that you've trained and now you're managing and they're still going to screw it up. Mm -hmm. But you're but now you're talking 10 grand a month. Right. To, to have that kind of coverage and the and and converting that into technology is fully scalable and that's the beautiful part about it it becomes truly truly scalable uh, so I want to do a little side note real quick and let's let's take a look up here on the screen for a second for those of you that are uh, just listening in, um, this says action always beats intention. It's a little screenshot out of our hundred offer challenge Facebook group, and uh, and Daryl said this, and and there's a reason I'm I'm pulling this into the conversation right now is because we we were just talking about optimization and systematizing those different steps in the funnel process, right? Gener doing marketing and generating a lead and all the way through the conversion process, every one of those actions is a step. And there's a certain response and conversion rate for every one of those steps. And if you if you measure those steps, you'll see clear drop offs where performance dropped off in certain areas of of the process. So obviously, we talked about the de deal negotiator uh, picking up the slack when it comes to picking up the phone and talking to someone. But if you go upstream of that, another area that we saw was people not making offers. And so we saw this big drop off in conversion rate or activity like action rate when people would create an opportunity, generate a lead, uh, have something ready to go, and then, and then there would be this drop off. And so that's where the the idea of the 100 offer challenge even came from how do we recreate habits and get people taking action without getting in their own way and so this is a screenshot from the 100 offer challenge and it says from daryl says hi all since the 100 off he says the 100 day challenge since the 100 offer challenge this was 100 offers in five days not a 100 day challenge since the 100 offer challenge, I've only managed to get 82 offers out. And I want to stop and highlight that. I've only managed to get 82 offers out. Only 82. Only 82. He has now sent more offers than 99.9% .9 of all people that say I'm a real estate investor. <laughs> That's exactly Let's right. Let's be clear. That's exactly right. So I've only managed to get 82 offers out over the last eight to nine days. I still work a J-O-B. So I got uh, as many as I could do with the amount of time that I had available. And it's such a cool thing to look up there and to see. And this is just one of, of many people that came in. More people have done it and, and told us privately through the support desk or through uh, other ways that we interact with customers than have come into the Facebook group and posted about it. But we have so many people that have come in and said, Hey, this this system, this process, it it really worked for me, and it's super cool to see. And we've got a bunch more. I've talked to multiple who signed up for it, but life gets in the way, or they were out of town that week or whatever, and so they're just now getting into it. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple of weeks after. So, yeah. yeah, it's a game changer. Well, it's a it's a game changer. We we did a we did a training. Um, earlier this morning in our real estate mogul academy and one of the questions that was asked in the in from a mogul academy attendee uh, on this training was it, it was basically how do i keep the momentum going what do i have to do to keep momentum going and the answer that i gave was it was twofold to begin with number number one 
Make sure you're marketing every day. And then number two, make sure you're following up every day. But the real answer to that, like that's the simple thing, goes down to our blueprint. And it's the, it's the blueprint that we tell people to wake up when your feet hit the floor at the side of the bed, ask four questions every single day. And if you get this, and if you make this a habit, so listening to this show right now creates for you no excuse because you no longer are going to wonder what do I need to do when my feet hit the floor to make money this week. You're going to know after I tell you these four steps in the blueprint. Ask yourself these four questions. Number one, who am I marketing to today? Number two, who am I following up with today? Number three, who am I talking to today? And number four, who am I making an offer to today? And in the 100 Offer Challenge, we took that fourth piece and we said, no matter the answer to the first three, let us show you how to solve the fourth question. And so people now have a step-by-step process, but that's that's the blueprint, the four questions that I want you to ask every morning. Yeah, it's almost like a lot of these people like just cleared the mechanism. And I think, you know, Mike, you talked about it the last two times, but, you know, they were I, I saw multiple people in the Facebook and just personally messaging both of us, um, just really taking pride in the fact that they were pushing to change their own personal mindset. Uh, so they were answering other people's questions like, nope, don't worry about that. Send the offers. Just get the offers out. Like I read that multiple times. I sent a follow-up message. I think it was a couple days after the challenge ended. um, And I can count at least three people because my question, my line of questioning in the email that I sent was um, checking in on how your 100 offers, sending them out has been going. Replies come back. I'll, I'll match your 100 and I've got 200 out. I've, I've heard that on multiple occasions. I, I, I think because people got to sending 100 and they realized it's not as scary and it's not as difficult as I thought it was. And they were actually almost having fun with it. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it, was, it was really good to see. I love when the investor who was afraid to make offers four days ago or whatever gets their 100 out the door. And then somebody else in the group chimes in and says, oh, but what about, what about? And then they immediately step in. A little cocky about it. I like it. Yeah. I I love it. Yeah. Because deep down they want to help. They said this person has the same barrier in their life that I had a week ago, but I pushed through and got it lifted and let me go help them push through because now I know what it feels like on the other side. That's proximity, right? That's right. That's right. That's and they're, they just, they're tr- they truly want to help. It is funny if they get a little, you know, kind of rough their feathers up a little bit, but they want to help because that old saying that um, you can't help somebody up unless you're on higher ground, you immediately get to higher ground and then somebody calls for help and they just reach out and they say, I got this, hang on, you don't, you don't worry about that. Go get them out. And they, they start to elevate everybody in the industry. Don't think that the hundred offer challenge bumps up the competition in every market, it elevates the game of real estate investors, which makes more people want to sell to competent, honest investors who do what they say they're going to do and who can buy property in just about any condition. I mean, even stuff that's burned down for the lot, right? We are willing to step in to situations that traditional sale methods don't account for. And there's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of them all over the place. And so, yeah, I love that people, one more thing, Rob, I love that people are helping who needed help seven days ago and now they're on the other side of it helping. That's really cool to see. And then the other thing too, is these barriers, once you blow through them, they don't rebuild. Yeah. They're gone. That bar- that barrier's done. That I'm afraid to make offers barrier. Once you go make a hundred, it doesn't show up six months later. Yeah. It's done. It's buried. Have a ceremony if you want, but it's not coming back, right? There's no Lazarus here. <laughs> that, right. <laughs> but that's what it takes, right? It takes a, a reframing of habits yep. and a reframing of, of the belief system. And, you know, on a, on a past episode, a past show, um, I did a whole conversation about 
the belief system. We, we have a statement of beliefs that, that we uh, function around. And that statement of beliefs um, talks about towards the end that we believe people can succeed when they get around people that are doing the things that they want to do. Whether that person has achieved it yet or whether that person is on the journey, the simple fact that humans are social creatures and when you're around like-minded people that are on a similar journey, some further ahead, some at the same spot, and some further behind, but all moving towards the same place, all willing to step over the speed bump, jump over the hurdle, break through the brick wall, all willing to do what it takes to achieve the goal, people win in a bigger way. And what's interesting is sometimes the the people are more are more motivated by pain than they are motivated by pleasure. And sometimes it has to get bad in order to get motivated to do something different, rock the boat and shake something up in order to achieve the pleasure. What if what if somebody said, "You know what? I'm going to pursue the pleasure before the pain becomes so bad. I'm going to do the work, do the hard work. I'm going to put in the effort. I'm going to develop the skill so that I can achieve the result before it got bad. Because we see that all the time, right? Somebody gets into a, between a rock and a hard place or things get so bad in their life. And, you know, that doesn't mean they're destitute. It doesn't mean they're going bankrupt. But they get so frustrated with something in their life that they need to step in and make a change. What if you stepped in and made that change because you were so committed to pursuing the life you want to live? And, um, and we're so committed to that, right? My, my wife and I have always lived by the, the mantra of uh, life by design. And we have a we have a little slogan that is sort of our marriage uh, slogan, and it's simple with flair. And so the reason we have this is because we don't need a complicated life. We don't need a we don't need a uh, you know a, a fancy snooty life or or anything like that. But we we want the things in life that bring us joy, right? And so. I, I talked at the beginning of this about flying our airplane up to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and going fly fishing, and then leaving that afternoon, two and a half hours later, flying home and being back in Denver and eating dinner at our dinner table that evening. That's that's a lifestyle thing that is intentionally designed into everything that we do, and it and it forced me to say. I'm going to put in the effort at a sufficient level of skill to achieve the result that I want so that I can do anything in life or business that I desire. And so our, our, our marriage slogan is simple with flair. We love the simple things in life. We love to keep it simple. We love to connect with family. We love to connect with friends. We love to cook amazing food. We love to, to serve people food at our house. We love to travel with moments of massive flair. We love massive flair that comes in and, and somebody looks at the flair and says, wow, they have such an amazing life. And it's because we combine the two things that we really enjoy life. But that was all life by design. And real estate investing is a huge piece. It is the thing that got me to life by design and being able to do the things I wanted to do, which is really fun. How was the flight back, by the way? <laughs> bumpy or smooth? Uh, it was a little bumpy. Yeah. Uh, light, light chop because we, we did have to go a little south and then cut back a little north to avoid two uh, areas of light to moderate and then extreme precipitation in this one area and under that cloud layer we were we were up pretty high we were at like uh 13,500 feet okay but the clouds were like at 15,000 feet and they extended up uh even higher so I could have filed an IFR flight plan and gone up through the clouds and got up on top yep um I chose not to um just because it wasn't that long of a flight two and a half hours yeah and um 
we just we just stayed low. I was asking because I was in Jackson Hole a month ago. Yep. For my um, our family went. My mom and dad celebrated their fiftieth wedding anniversary. But Southern Wyoming is windy, mm-hmm. <laughs> and from what I gather, it's a windy a lot. So yep. I was curious if you guys were getting tossed. No, uh, okay. we just got light chop, and it was mostly be- due to the the convective activity in the in the weather system. The, the winds weren't that bad. Um, if if anything, it was kind of nice. On Monday, we got up early, and flew up there uh, because the event, the the mastermind that I was attending, started at nine in the morning, and so we wanted to get there before it started. So we left at like four in the morning. So we could get there, get our car, get settled, check into a place, and then get to the event. So we, we did that. Um, so going up there, it was nice. We got a east to west tailwind, which is not very common. Usually when you fly west, you get a headwind, right. and, it so, and it slows you down. Uh, if, even if you look at commercial flights, if you look at a commercial flight and the amount of time it takes a commercial flight to, say, go from New York City to Denver— versus Denver to New York City, Denver to New York City is always significantly faster than New York City back to Denver. And so I got lucky this week. I had a tailwind going there, and I had a tailwind coming mm, back. Nice. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often. You saved eight, eight bucks in jet fuel, too. <laughs> yeah, if I put jet fuel in my airplane, <laughs> I would have a more significant problem. <laughs> problem. <laughs> hey, back to the lifestyle thing. That's what everybody. That's why people come to real estate. That's right. It's for something. It's not always the same thing. Exactly. But that's why, you know. No, I mean, even though we get a kick out of stinky houses, um, nobody's ever said, "I want to learn how to do real estate investing because I love stinky houses." That's not it. The opportunity in real estate, they know that it's a high-paid commodity, right? You're not selling T-shirts. High paid a commodity so that fill in the blank. Yep. So that's right. I was just looking, Rob, you're sitting right in front of the mogul sign. Mogul's a mindset. I yep. think especially newer investors think mogul's a how to. I just gotta learn it. That's that's a small piece of it. Right? Being able to do what or have real estate do what you want it to is all upstairs in your head Mm -hmm. which is why i'm i I love that we're coming off the 100 offer challenge i love that we're going into the remote market challenge if you blow up the barrier to offers and if you blow up the barrier to remote market this entire country is your playground yep in two weeks offer challenge five days this next one's going to be five days i'm assuming i haven't heard you tell me that yet but that's my assumption in two weeks you mean I can blow up all these, right, these two barriers that have been severely holding me back? People are crazy to not get involved. Totally agree. Or they just don't want to do real estate. I mean, that's a, if you say you don't want to do real estate, great. Mm-hmm. Find something else. But if you want to do real estate, you've got to be a part of this stuff. Yep. Yeah, I think it, it also goes kind of goes back from me personally, Rob, when you were, when we did the, the in-house training and... Uh, you ask for the people that actually were interested in you, you always ask why, right? And you ask me that question and it really does get you thinking about why you would want to dive into something like that. Yep. Um, and my, my why, uh, at the time, you know, I wasn't married yet. I was about to get married and I have all these aspirations kind of like what you and, um, your wife's, uh, kind of mantra is. Um, and I, I've been recently hearing a lot about, uh, in, in the make money space, at least, um, the abundance mindset, uh, w- which I think is a, a really good concept and a really good mindset to have. But um, I really like the way that we put it here in house is that real estate opens up uh, the opportunity to live the life that you specifically want to live. And some people may not want to live super lavishly and abundantly. They just want to live that simple life and uh, do it in the exact manner that they want to do it in. And I think that aligns with me a little bit more and I think that's why I got hooked on real estate so so fast is because it, it is a uh, it is a good route to accomplish that goal um, for me personally. Yeah. Yep. Totally. It, and it it's a it's a good route because it can be one of those things that you, you know you don't you don't have to start a business you don't have to start a service you don't have to start a thing for like in your situation you can utilize the 
the job at FreedomSoft and the income earned at FreedomSoft and the knowledge and the connections at FreedomSoft to build your wealth. And real estate, the assets of real estate is is one of those things that and any any person can utilize. And you know, not everybody, and I'm not saying that you couldn't, but I'm saying not everybody can go start a business. Not everybody wants to take on that process. But anybody that has the desire can go buy a house because now the house is doing the work, mm -hmm. right? The house has created the value and it sells itself. I have a roof. I have a toilet. I have a sink, right? I have carpet. My walls are white. They're freshly painted. My, my The windows in my living room are clear. I can see outside. The house sells itself. And that, and that value creates an income stream. And if you, when you own that asset, you're the recipient and the beneficiary of that income stream. It's a beautiful thing. It's something that anybody can do. Totally agree. Anybody. What does a typical franchise cost to launch these days? Oh, it depends, but you, you can get stuff anywhere Quarter from a million to, yeah. And I was going to say anywhere from a, a franchise that's truly proven and truly like long, Right, like not has the one that started yesterday. Yeah, not the not the brand new one that you could buy for eight grand yesterday, but a truly established franchise with a proven model where operators stay in it for the long term and they renew their licenses and they buy new territories. You're talking to six figures. It's a hundred grand at plus. Right, at least. Yeah. To start a FreedomSoft account and to go through the hundred offer challenge and the remote market challenge and be able to launch a business for some you know, the cost of software and some marketing expense is a couple hundred bucks. I, there's not even a word for me to describe how insane inexpensive it can be compared to, Hey, I want to start a business. Yep. A legit business, a high paying business, right? So all the above, let me, let without, me go, keep going. Go ahead. Hit it. I just <laughs> wanted to say, I, um, I was talking and I, I was a, I'll be honest. I was a little frustrated. This is a couple of weeks ago. Somebody I was talking to was griping a little bit about the, the cost of FreedomSoft to run a business. And I was like, time out. Right. Most of the time, I, you guys know I'm you're even kill. I'm I'm even and I'm positive. I, I had it. I was like, <laughs> time out. <laughs> you can run your entire business in here. Your marketing department all of your data, all of your, all of your, all of your for this. I was like, do you know what it costs to go launch a legit franchise right now? <laughs> like back this truck up. And then we were able to proceed. So it's okay. wild though, Rob. It is. It is. So I'm going to say this. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to tag stop. onto that because a moment ago you told me to go ahead, but Anybody then you kept talking. Anybody can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody. So listen to this. Can do it. Listen to this. This is the same advice that I, that I have given my kids from the time they were young. Okay, it's the same advice I'll give on this podcast. If two hundred dollars a month for a FreedomSoft account is too expensive, then you need to stop. You need to slow down, and you need to ask yourself, where can I go earn a little bit more money to invest in something that can make me a lot of money? And here's what I here's what I taught my kids: go mow lawns. Okay, at 50 bucks a pop for 45 minutes to mow a lawn, you just made 60 some bucks an hour. 60 bucks an hour times 2,080 hours in a year is 120 grand a year. So mow lawns. You don't, you don't have to mow full time and make 120 grand a year, but if you can earn 60 bucks an hour mowing a couple of neighborhood little lots that take 45 minutes and you can earn that kind of money, and and one hundred and ninety seven dollars a month for the subscription is too much. Then go figure out how to make that extra money at a higher margin, at a higher rate. Right. Uh, my son, when he was 15, started a window washing business. Why? Because he was able to disconnect the hours he worked from the value he provided. And it wasn't I'm going to mow your lawn for 12 bucks an hour. I'm going to mow your lawn for 15 bucks an hour. It was, I'm going to mow your lawn for $65, and it's going to take me 45 minutes to do. Now you got an $85 to $90 an hour gig. 
So disconnect your hours from your value. Washing windows is, oh, you've got 13 windows in this uh, commercial building. I'll wash the outside for X dollars. You know how long it's going to take. But the value of having clean windows, the uh, one of the one of the marketing pieces that we put together for Killer Views window washing was uh, delivering happiness, because when your team sits inside of your office and looks out the glass through crystal clear, beautiful windows and can see the mountain range and the Colorado Front Range. That makes you happy. It makes you happy to come into work, which, by the way, I think our windows need to be washed. Don't I was just going to say, speaking of, <laughs> it's why been does a... it look like it's 830 at night outside right now? <laughs> because well, that, it's that raining all the that time. That one's tinted. That one's tinted. Yeah, because but it's raining all the That's time, true. too. Like it's it's been a, we need to get the cadence of window washing up around here to deliver a little bit more happiness. <laughs> but my point, my point is figure out how to increase your income. Right. That, that at the end of the day, that's what I'm trying to say is increase your income, and and then t- and then use that to invest in something that can explode your income. And you have Two more step. control of it in general across the board. Somebody right. somebody may frequently be putting two hundred dollars into some stock that they read an article about. Right. But you don't really have actually any control over that whatsoever. None. Um, but for some reason people are okay with doing with that instead of taking control over that $200 and investing in something that, you know, is a little bit more yours. hundred percent, hundred percent. All right, guys, I think it's time to move to the last segment of the show as we start to wrap up. And this is the mogul memes section. I have no idea (laughs) what we're going to hit in this section this week, but as I see on the screen, this is the segment that has investors laughing. And I, I don't know if they're laughing you because the memes these? are funny or if they're <laughs> laughing at us trying Think, to be funny. We don't, care. we don't care either way. And we don't care really either way. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> the, the ones that I made, I was doing it over lunch, and I was making them on my phone. And, like, it was so funny because normally I would, like, you know, scroll through and like, maybe text somebody or be on, like, an app or something. Well, I was on the meme creator, but it's like I was having so much fun doing that. I, I looked like an idiot sitting there at that table laughing at myself <laughs> by yourself at the memes that I was making. Oh, I can only imagine then. Okay, so let's uh, let's dive in. What do we got here? People in analysis paralysis. Me making <laughs> offers daily. <laughs> making offers, John daily. Yeah. Making yeah. offers, John the, daily. Yes. This so, one, I was actually, um, I didn't know which way to put it. Because, you know, Tiger Woods just professionally does it the right way, and the right way is making offers daily. Yeah. <laughs> so I could have switched it in that, but I think the way that this one was supposed to be set up is, you know, John Daly of this <laughs> meme is like, I don't care about anybody else. I'm going to do it the way, right? Yep. The John Daly way, which is, that's why I did it like this. <laughs> yeah, because if you... Simple with flair. Yeah, simple. Right. <laughs> I don't know. John Daly is not simple. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot of flair. So I was in uh, I was in St. Louis for an event six months ago or so, and maybe maybe nine months ago, and we were at, uh, we were at a restaurant and sat down right next to us was John Daly, and I assume maybe his manager or somebody uh they all had golf shirts and but it was uh so yeah, he, he was he, he was made right headlines there. six months ago for a 450 dollar uber eats taco bell order <laughs> <laughs> i don't which even is, know how you do that right which is just <laughs> awesome oh my goodness all right here's here's the next one we've got a panda in a tree looking at us with leaves in its mouth and it says when non-investors hear about investors making 10k on a property they never owned but and it, the panda. Rob, it's not just a panda that's with leaves. That's a koala. That is a oh, koala. Oh yeah, that's right. A koala yeah, that koala, koala. Eating with amazed eyes. Like, yeah. What is that? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I just didn't describe it very good. I got the wrong animal. Okay. Here what, we have what, a tiger. Yeah. Uh, what we're looking at here is an iguana with. No, it's a yeah. So it's a koala. Koala with big eyes, just stopped like stopped eating uh, in amazement. Stopped eating in amazement. Mouth yeah. hanging open with leaves in it. When investors hear about it, when non-investors hear about investors making 10K on a property they never own. Right. 
Because that seems impossible. It does. <laughs> People don't understand the value and the power of control. People don't understand the legal mechanisms of control over ownership. And sometimes control is better than ownership. Mm -hmm. In protecting sometimes against the downside of market shift, control yep. is far superior. You get all of the beneficial upsides and very little of the of the downsides when structured right and somebody somebody could say to that yeah but you don't get the tax benefits and what i always tell people whether they're excited about their tax refund or they're ex or they're like ah, i need all the tax benefits of x y and z and sometimes you do but, but not always i always tell people if you're excited about your tax refund you did your income wrong <laughs> right all right next one yep. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all staring at me. Move on to the next one. All right, we got uh, SpongeBob standing up here. Now, isn't SpongeBob here under the water? It is. I don't understand. Okay. That, yeah. Yeah, okay. So uh, we've got four squares on the screen for those of you that don't see it. Upper left says, wholesaling is dead on a big piece of paper. Upper right, it's SpongeBob reading that sign. Lower left is SpongeBob looking at fire under the water <laughs> and tossing that sign in or that piece of paper into the fire with excited eyes. Yeah, he's a little upset that somebody's saying wholesaling's dead. Wholesaling he's is like, not dead. Eh, it's not dead. Fire <laughs> fire starter. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Moving on. A seller with problems, me solving a seller problems. <laughs> Uh, All right, man. somebody's this got to step is, in. Yeah, somebody's got to take this one. I don't Who's... know how to describe this guy's face on the left. Yeah, <laughs> he's very... Uh... I think we've all made that face this walking into a me. house. Who is this? This is not me. I didn't do no, this, this, is, this is me. Oh, okay. Yeah, this guy is just absolutely uh, disgusted uh, with all his problems he has, and there you got the uh, savvy investor over there <laughs> solving problems. Looking, looking very calm and yeah, reflective. Do we... Uh, so... Do we know who these two people are, or are they just random pictures? I this is like off of, of a TV show. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but the guy on the left is a doctor. And yeah, it's but a, the this guy is on the left is um, August Rush. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's his name? I don't but know his now name. now he's older. But this is a, this is a newer uh, medical okay. drama. Got, okay, got it. Yeah. That, well, that's none of us watch TV we're making off. See, this apparently. is the problem with me doing culturally relevant <laughs> memes. I don't ever watch TV or know what's going on. Why so. you bring the young bucks we in? That's had, right. Well, we haven't had TV in years. Yeah. Well, uh, that's what, did you just say why we bring the young young bucks in here? Do yeah. you know how old he is? And do no, you know how old young he buck, is? Young buck. buck. You're the only one. You're the only young buck. <laughs> A singular <laughs> buck. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, launch into virtual markets. Got a big pill uh, case, a little bottle of pills. Uh, me doing one deal in my local market. Right. The medicine. The <laughs> medicine. It's a tough pill to swallow. It's a tough pill. Oh, that's, that's good. What, yeah. That's what this that's what this meme was called. It's a tough pill to swallow. Did you make I this one? See, I did. You did? Yeah. I think this one's more like, OK, that's the medicine. Yeah. To help yeah. You, you know? Yeah. And Would you, um, if you had the choice and I said, hey, I'm going to hand you a business, but I'm going to hand you one of two businesses and you have to choose which one. Would you rather sell aspirin or vitamins? I have an answer. Aspirin. Because it's easier to solve the pain. Because of how lucrative it is? easier to solve the pain because it's easier to solve the pain than it is to prevent vitamins are take these every day and you'll be healthy in 20 years mm. advil is i have a splitting headache now i need it solved yep oh yeah but then but then you have all of the uh moral questions that go along with yeah, that that's why so i couldn't do it i couldn't do it either yeah I i'd go, have to I i'd healthy, have to sell the vitamins, vitamins yep. and next, i'd go next broke time you guys it. have a headache come see me <laughs> <laughs> all right next one uh we've got Kids drowning in the pool. Wait, 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 wait not, ki <laughs> not kids. One kid struggling in the water. <laughs> yeah, we got one kid struggling in the water, and that and that kid is titled "Investors Without Freedom Soft," drowning while the while the adult is over here playing happily and laughing with the single kid, which is titled "Investors with Freedom Soft," right? And the adult is titled "Freedom Soft." Right. There's one kid that looks like. <laughs> She's drowning here. She's drowning. There's another little girl 
that's happily getting into the pool holding the hands of an adult. That's the investor with Freedom Soft, and the adult is Freedom Soft. Oh my gosh! That little girl's face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I like it. I think it's true, but it's, I feel bad for that little girl. <laughs> this was definitely not at church camp. <laughs> All right, no, let's see. Uh, is that camp. the last one, or we got no, we got one more? Um, let me see here. I can't get it to go to the next slide. Oh, maybe that's the last one. Then. That might be the last one. Yeah. You know, I'm just gonna say something. I participated in meme creation. And my meme didn't get created into this slide they, deck. They didn't make the cut, Rob. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't get any memes from oh. you this, this week. Well, where's my Yoda meme? You can't use the same meme. No, we've never done that one <laughs> yes, yet. Yes, we did last week. We did. We did. See, mm -hmm. This guy's Remember you did the Yoda voice. Oh, did I? I thought I did that off off the air. Mm -hmm. No, I did that on the That was oh. off the air. Hey, how would Yoda say, my memory's not so good? <laughs> my memory not so good it is. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think that's uh, that's a wrap. I just want to remind you that the Real Estate Mogul Show is brought to you by Freedom Soft. What I want you to do is smash that like button and subscribe to the show on YouTube. Share it on all of the places that you like to share amazing content and funny people because <laughs> I think we're funny people. Or we at least have a good time trying. And... Um, with that one, we'll see you in the next one. That's a wrap. Happy 4th, everybody. Happy 4th.